I don't know whether to say good night or good morning. It is 1.42 on 1.42 a.m. on May 7th, 2015. 15. Wow. Today is Mother's Day. And I would like to wish a happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. But especially my wife, Kira Morris. <sighs> I'm just going to tell a story from my perspective. And I ask that people respect my perspective. Because my witness of my life is just as valid as your witness of your life. That being said, I admit my life has been pretty fucking serious. And, you know, I've, I've had people in my life accuse me of lying about having ever lived in New Zealand. Just because I guess my life was too interesting for them to believe. I... Not exactly sure why, but I'm going to tell a story, and it begins not in New Zealand, but on the River Styx. <laughs> and um, if you don't believe in the River Styx, I can show you on a map how this one river on the other dimension connects every continent, every major civilization center on the planet. There's one river of life that goes through everything. Like a physical, actual river. It's interdimensional, but still, still a physical river. Yes, other dimensions are physical. Mm. <laughs> I go like this because, like, some things are so obvious that I'm astounded why people haven't figured them out yet. Like, the information is there right in front of you. You just haven't put two and two together. Anyways, um, I'm trying not to wake up the kids or my wife. Kids that way. Wife that way. We live in a borderline trailer-ish <laughs> prefabricated home but the reason why we like this place is because the land oh it's nice it floods a lot during the rainy season but the rest of the year man it's cool so anyways my Murphy's if you're watching this happy mother's day I love you so much Oh, I know you're going to watch this because I'm going to sit you down and show it to you. Uh, so that's kind of if it's stupid. Wow, it really is late at night. I'm already babbling. River Sticks. Yeah, River Sticks. Sticks. This. When you, when you cross your fingers. <laughs> like pickup sticks. So, uh, I'll just start from the beginning. I remember being, like, taking my first steps. And this isn't like Moses in a basket or anything. At least not that I'm aware of. But, I'm not. It's nothing to do with any person in a basket stories that I know of. There might be something out there about this, but I'm not sure. It would probably be in the Osiris myth, if anything. Um, <laughs> so my first memory is a conversation with my mother. Mother Nature, who was my wife. She was my mother in the underworld. I'm not sure if it was immediately before this lifetime, but it was certainly immediately before a lifetime, 
and it seems like it might have been this lifetime. Um, human perspective is supposed to be limited. Like, I'm not supposed to be sitting there showing off, Oh, I remember everything. I have all the secrets of the universe. I have the secrets of the universe, but I don't want to be able to access them in a way that you couldn't. Because if I could just sit there and do that, I would just be showing off, and I wouldn't be teaching you a damn thing, would I? So I got to do this this way. I, I got to sit here and let people doubt me. I got to sit here and occasionally just have complete brain farts. I have used massive amounts of magic on myself to ensure my humanity, mostly for the sake of people who piss me off. Now, I am capable of overriding certain things in certain instances, and I do so all the time. But perhaps if you had memories that dated way back before you were born, you'd have access to some pretty fancy stuff too. And in fact, the way the rules that I set up when I destroyed and recreated the universe a couple of years back, there's literally nothing I can do that my kids can't do. I'm, not, you know, created in my image. Hmm. Only not as stupid looking because I'm old. Like, and there's only there's only so many things you can do to a a human body while retaining memories to make it seem like a new one. <laughs> Coffee. So, first conversation I had with my mother that was anything atypical of what most mothers would tell their children was when I was walking on the riverbank of the river sticks, I found a like a little pan like one of the little flutes that are kind of just like the, the reeds wrapped together. I think Native Americans um, use something similar. But it was it was the reeds that were growing on the bank of the river sticks made into a flute. And it kind of triggered a little bit of a memory flash. Okay, bear in mind, I'm an infant, barely able to walk, and I'm in the fucking underworld. And I was just born. And I'm having a memory flash. Oh, it, it starts weird and gets weirder, puppies. It starts weird and gets a whole lot weirder. But this is the story of how I met Mother Nature, so. At least in what seems to be this life. I mean, like a continuous stream of memories for me. Like, I practice memory from a very young age. I practice me and my wife. When we were little, we promised each other to remember. And we played this game where every night when we went to bed, we would remember from the first memory up until that day, one by one, every single memory, as well as we could remember it. Because we knew that that was the one way that we would be able to remember our time together and be able to remember each other when we found each other one day. <sighs> So, the memory flash I get was of what seemed to be this world. And it was kind of like dying in a dark alley with knowledge of an evil Peter Pan. Now, most people think evil Peter Pan, especially, uh, you know, three years ago, three and a half years ago, when I started trying to tell other people about these memories. Oh, big mistake. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. It's 
and well, I wasn't in the mood to have to prove anything to fucking humans at the time. This was before some of the curses I placed upon myself because, man, when I woke up, I was just too powerful. I was fucking glowing blue all the time and just too full of too much energy. Like, it was fucking bizarre. And I got in a conversation with my wife and Brian and Terry. And I was trying to tell them, like, all the, all the nursery rhymes and, and ancient little children's riddles, there is more truth buried in those things than there is in any of these fucking so-called history books. And I, I guess if you think about it, it makes perfect sense. Like, if, if you're a, a race on the run, if you're a culture on the run, and you're being oppressed and chased down, exterminated. One of the things that the Khazarian Empire, that Russia still does to this day, is lets women and children live. And <sighs> sorry get distracted about all the fucking death that's going on right now. Right now. Yeah, I, I, I see pain of the world. Constantly I hear prayers of the world. Constantly. And um, I don't want to say right now there's nothing I can do about it, but right now from my perspective it feels like there's very little. It feels like Whatever I do, it's not enough. So anyways, telling these, telling the obvious to good friends of mine who have been with me through the ages, okay? Um, one of which has been referred to as my brother. One of which has, well, He's been referred to as a lot of things. He's Gabriel. So, <laughs> and he's not your average crazy person who thinks they're Gabriel. No, he's just, he's just a guy, man. Like, he doesn't even care anymore. He's just a guy. He kind of like, yeah, I remember that shit and giggles about it. But if you met the dude, there's no denying it. And he's one of the very, very, very few people my entire life as a human this time, as a pretty badass human, by the way. Um, oh, fucking true. He's one of the few people I've met my entire life who I wouldn't want to fight. I mean, just... Like, okay, last time I got taken to jail for sleeping in my car after Katrina... In New Orleans. I seen this one cat. He was a little bit bigger than Teal'c on Stargate SG-1. Okay. Well, same height, same build, shoulder to shoulder. But he was like linebacker style. Like weight. You know, like probably about four times my size. But my height, because I'm a little bit taller than Teal'c. So I seen this guy. Did not want to fight him. I ended up getting jumped by him and two other people while I was asleep, and I won that fight. By the way, that's not what this story's about. <laughs> no idea what this story's about. Oh, yeah. Leadership. No, fuck. And that, that gag started to get old. So, this conversation went on about the evil Peter Pan thing and all the other. Hidden secrets and nursery rhymes. About three days. And my friend Brian and Terry, they came over almost every day. Just damn near every day. And I 
I don't know how this particular continuation of the conversation came up, but basically what I said was, all right, the muses have been the angels behind perpetuating these stories and keeping them safe and in the hearts of children for generations. And I remember I remember a very Tinkerbell like creature coming to me when I was a baby in this life, in this world, teaching me the old stories. Which is kinda of fucking bizarre, but that's for another day. And I talked about this with him. I'm like Seems really fucking silly, but <sighs> insanity doesn't seem to have a greater scheme to it. Insanity doesn't seem to have vast existential meaning, you know? Well, so my presumption was that these are my daughters with Mother Nature. These are pre war in heaven very elder, technically, goddesses. Yeah, fucking crazy shit. Um, so, if that is true, then I should be able to just ask them to make an entire mainstream TV series to explain the truth from the ancient age, the time before time, if you will, about how all these stories might have really happened in a way that modern man could benefit from and relearn some values that seem to be getting forgotten, especially the value of true love and that true love exists. It's kind of sad that most people don't believe in true love. What the fuck do you people live for, you know? If you don't even believe in true love, you don't even think that in one lifetime, one day, that you might... You know, like, male and female. You're male or female. You, you will find your other part one day, one lifetime, somehow, some way. They might not be incarnated right now. They might be incarnated as the same sex as you right now. But one day in one lifetime, you and your soulmate will have a family. Okay? Grow up. It was a hand gesture. Just kind of shadowed my face. Shadow on the face. Yeah, 18 minutes, I've only covered like the first part of the story. Not even. So, basically I said, if this is true, because like I said, throughout the entire experience, I was maintaining a purely skeptical string of consciousness. Well, when I wasn't, I was fucking glowing blue. So, I tried to, as often as possible, maintain a purely stream of, purely skeptical stream of consciousness. So I said, if... This is true if my soulmate and I have daughters that are the ancient goddesses, the sirens and the, no, not the sirens, the muses. Well, sirens too, but another story. Got a lot of stories. A lot of stories. Oh my God. Wait, shit, that's me. Um, well, actually, I, I don't have a god. I have a goddess, my wife. Prepare yourself. Because this is extremely fucking silly. But if you're willing to acknowledge the fact that I'm not lying right now, this should be proof enough, period, that I'm not your average fucking human. Okay? 
In fact, the likelihood of me being human at all and being able to do such a thing is fucking preposterous. I said, if they're my daughters, if there are daughters, they should make this TV series for us. What do you want to call it, dear? And she just kind of looked at me and smiled. Once upon a time. And I snapped my fingers. But I wasn't thinking anything there because I, I, I literally can't snap my fingers without doing magic. And actually realized, no, wait, we'd have to wait too long. So I snapped my fingers again and basically went back in time two years so that we would only have to wait a matter of months for this TV show to, came out, to come out. And in seven months, came out, it did. And I told my friends Terry and Brian, as humans, okay, I mean, we, we, we just hang out as humans, we're, we're people, just like y'all, we're people, we're just much fucking older people. I told them, alright, so, y'all keep an eye out, there's gonna be evil pa Peter Pan. And when the show came on, I reminded them again, just wait for it. There will be, there will be, I promise you, there will be an evil Peter Pan in this show. And sure enough, season three came around. And there's evil Peter, there's evil fucking Peter Pan. And just like in my memories, it is a weird generational thing. <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say about this because that's father to son stuff, and this is Mother's Day. So my wife and I, this is our favorite show. We watch it every Sunday. We were looking forward to the season finale tomorrow, two hour, two hour special, Once Upon a Time. Um, and I consider it a way that ABC Disney has uh, redeemed itself. And you know, like I said, there's people on this planet that aren't human. They're just not. And those people have no problem recognizing me. And all in all, any any organization that is under the control of those beings, I'm able to influence directly. Those are my kids. And we get along a lot better than most people think. Because they're my kids. So, this stick that I found. Four pipes tied together with peeled away reed strand to tie it together. And it was half buried in the sand on the bank of a river, like in the little sedimentary flood area. As in, uh, when I lifted it out of the sand, it shook the sand out of it brown, like spillway kind of, if you're not from New Orleans, um, like brown riverbank sand, you know, a little bit of water filled up the hole, you know, it was that close, and, well, that's pretty much where that memory is, and so as far as the, the pipe itself goes, but at that point, my mother started informing to me, informing me of the plan that I was about to 
risk my existence undertaking in a, in a fairly real sense. I mean, I risk the total annihilation of, of myself willingly just to kind of prove a point. That that point is not the point of this video. But basically, there was a lighthouse of sorts. It was a, it was a, it was like a, a towering pyre of a castle. Okay, and to get to this world, you had to go through. somewhat of a labyrinth to a staircase that had pictures well actually mirrors that would become pictures along the walls of it and each picture would be of your memories from a lifetime (laughs) <laughs> and there was another goddess that scared the shit out of me. Bear in mind, I'm an infant, barely able to, holding this other goddess's hand, walk up these stairs. She's kind of dragging me up these stairs, and I'm supposed to look at all these things, and she's sitting there trying to I didn't know whether she was trying to read my mind. Say hello, Murphase. Hi, Murphase. (laughs) Um, so, this, oh, what the hell is I talking about? The mirror maze. Um, I'd call it the mirror maze. It wasn't really a maze. It was fucking stairs. Uh, and if, you're, I, I, I could kind of sense, I don't really remember like what the, what the flash was, but I sensed that if you remembered something, that something very bad would happen to you. Um, backtrack a little bit. The conversation after the, the pan flute thing, um, was kind of warning me about what I would face when I went to the tower. Um, So, I get to the last mirror, and I remember one thing. And I get really paranoid <coughs> that this evil goddess who's leading me up this tower knows that I remember this one thing. So either the, I don't know, the, the magical mechanism that tested you is in the mirrors or, and she couldn't read my mind. Or if she could read my mind, and this is what I think is actually true, that you're allowed to take one single thought with you when you come to this world to help you find your path. Oh, my hair looks great. It's the middle of the freaking night. I took a shower, woke up. It's all poofy. <laughs> um, <laughs> TMI. Um, she just Facebooking. Um, so, yeah, true love. That was the one thought that I take when I came to this world. And I remember being stuck in a tree for a really long time, like stuck in a tree, couldn't move, stuck in a tree for hundreds of years. And I remember every fucking agonizing irritating, tedious second of these hundreds of years, but what I don't remember is whether or not it was before I was born 
on the River Styx, or whether it happened between the lighthouse and entering this world. So, yeah. At this point, my human memories begin. Um, first one at six months old, the next one at three years old on my third birthday. I got a Brio figure eight train <coughs> set. I got a lot of Brio train sets when I was a kid. That little Brio figure eight train set and a little orange subway looking cart. It was like always my favorite. Anyway. <laughs> so, three years old in Decatur, Alabama. Then we moved to Wellington, New Zealand. And in Wellington, New Zealand, I have this little girl who's like, my best friend who I'm in love with, but I'm too scared to tell her that I'm in love with her. And I always like look over at her hand and want to hold it. And every day we had just very weird, magical times together. And every night we would meet each other in our dreams and have even more weird, more magical times together. Like, creating animals, creating plants, creating continents, you know, like, we just, we just like to make stuff. And all these dreams, and even this girl, became, even though we promised each other that we'd always remember each other, it became more of a fantasy to me throughout my life. And as specific as these memories were, as much as they affected me my entire life, and as long as I spent, you know, like I spent probably three solid years keeping the promise of trying to remember every single thing, the beginning to the present day, every night that I went to sleep. But she had a grandmother that she lived with, and her mother was kind of missing in action. Her father left, and her mother kind of was having some problems. And I remember, you know, being told about this. And I remember the day that she told me she was leaving. Like, I mean, I just went through about 50 other memories that I don't want to go through individually because this video would be very long. It's already getting too long, so. On the last day I spent with Maggie, <clears throat> we were playing in my bedroom, and my dad comes in. We called him the weasel, <laughs> and she remembered that. <laughs> And my dad told me he had to talk to me for a second. And I told Maggie I'd be back before she could say supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Because at the time, she was physically like two and a half. She seemed mentally vastly, vastly older than me. She seemed like some kind of fairy goddess and I always like I had no idea who I was I was just a little boy just a little boy but I thought she was mother nature I thought she was like the fairy goddess I thought she was like this super being trapped in a little girl's body and as far as I know she was so <laughs> At the time, she could not say 
supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. <laughs> so I was kind of like cheating in one sense, or maybe that's just something I told myself later because I didn't keep the promise. My dad took me to Sydney on the ferry to his work at Inagraph, and we watched Return of the Jedi on this big screen TV that was in the office in there. And I didn't see her again. The day before that, she had told me that they found her mother and that she was going to go live with her again. And I remember being so heartbroken and wanting to be like, she's, that can't be your real mother. Like, what are you talking about? They didn't find your mother. It's like an evil conspiracy, man. Like, I didn't even know the word conspiracy at the time. But I just couldn't say anything because it was like, as much as I didn't want to lose her, she found her mother. And she was so happy and like, just frantic, hysterical, wanting to see her mother again. And we... That night in our dreams, we sat by the tree where we created everything, and we watched the sun rise for what seemed an eternity, and we ate Smarties. And I think that was the only time I actually got to hold her hand as many times as I looked over at it and like I mean I look at her hand today and I know that's the hand I remember when I was younger thinking that it looked like my mother my, my physical mother in this lifetime's hand <laughs> and like I remember the differences and I remember looking at my hand and comparing the similarities I remember that our fingers were all the same shape and to this day our shape on both hands <laughs> show up there thumbs the same oh, it's not even show up all sorry <laughs> okay so the uh the plan that we kind of had was was to meet back up in Alabama but when I moved back to New Zealand, um, when I moved back to America, I didn't move to Alabama. Turned out that she had moved to Alabama. She lived a, a, a 20 minute drive from where I lived in Alabama. I had moved back to Houston, later to return to New Orleans, where she would live, eventually to move to Baton Rouge, where she would live. And, you know, hop, scop, hop. <laughs> hopscotching over the freaking map one after the other and never meeting even though we went we went to the same high school we met we talked we didn't realize who each other was I mean, we were like barely talked you know like I, I barely knew her she was she was younger than me and i hung out with people older than me and then The only time we saw each other after that, it was like our parents were around. It was on the beach. This was, you know, before before she had actually left New Zealand, but after I had broken the promise. And I realized something had changed about her and that she was completely human now. And... It was near this place where we used to hang out. And we used to walk. I remember she, <laughs> we, we walked up to this seafood restaurant that was around the, around the corner of the bay. Like if you, if you walked along the little beach, you'd come to that. And I was talking about fish and chips. And she said, ooh, calamari. And I'm like, what the hell's calamari? <laughs> and she said, fried squid. I'm like, ugh. <laughs> I'm a four-year-old boy. I'm five, maybe. 
and that uh, was nasty. <laughs> so this bay, uh, Wiro Bay, near um, the south of Wellington, in New Zealand, had these rock formations. One kind of looked like roughly the shape of a sombrero, and I remember her sitting on the little side edge of it. You know, it had like a big pyre in the middle. It was kind of like I don't know, like like a rock bench. Almost, and she was sitting there poking this starfish with a stick, and it's like I saw her, but I only halfway recognized her, and I ran up to her, and I said, "What are you doing? You, you can't do that anymore," because I knew what she was doing. She was trying to bring it back to life. It was something that she could. She can bring something back to life. I, I I knew that, but I knew that I had like this really deep kind of subconscious understanding of things. It was because of the lessons she had taught me, and I knew that you can't do that anymore. And she was crying. She was so upset. And that was the the memory that led us to remembering each other. My wife is the goddess Mother Nature. And she has been more tortured more used, more abused, more trodden than any other soul in the history of existence. And her children have enslaved her, metaphorically and physically. She has been deleted from history. She was imprisoned and used for a thousand years. It's really sad that nobody knows this. That nobody can just conceptualize Mother Nature and realize how bad we've fucked her up. <laughs> By we, I mean you. It's not like I've never consumed anything. Just as guilty as everyone. Technically, you are in this lifetime too. You're stop, stop, stop killing yourself with all your modern technology. What? I'm just, just my mom. She is her own mother. I miss that's awkward. Awesome. Yeah, you miss yourself. <laughs> her mother died before her soul re-entered her body. That's kind of weird. Um, <laughs> oh, 43, 48, 49, 50. Hmm. So yeah, the point of this video is anyone who watches it That's the short version of my story of Mother Nature and how she changed my life and how if it wasn't for her, I would just be another sleeping, stupid human. And technically, and those with understanding. Please listen. Even though I have all the power of the universe, phenomenal cosmic powers, even to living space, that kind of thing. Any power that I wield in this world, her power. <laughs> <laughs> the reason why you might be doubting 
all of this. Less to do with me, more to do with you. See, your concept of God has come from nothing but vanity. And um, it's not my job to live up to your expectations. And it certainly isn't hers. Yeah. We're very sleepy. It's now three. Holy crap. It's, it's three. Yeah, it's almost three o'clock in the morning. Um. Um, I just fall asleep and hit my forehead on the pause button or whatever. And, uh, it didn't work. 